you want to lead the Decepticons into battle? Then Megatron Tyrant might be the commander for you. Megatron Tyrant reads, Three, a red, a white, and a black for a legendary artifact creature Robot 7-5. More than meets the eye. One, a red, a white, and a black. You may cast this card converted for one, a red, a white, and a black. Your opponents can't cast spells during your combat. At the beginning of your post-combat main phase, you may convert Megatron. If you do, add one colorless for each one life your opponents have lost this turn. And on the other side, we have Megatron Destructive Force. Legendary Artifact Vehicle, 4-5, Living Metal. As long as it's your turn, this vehicle is also a creature. Whenever Megatron attacks, you may sacrifice another artifact. When you do, Megatron deals damage equal to the sacrificed artifact's mana value to target creature. If excess damage would be dealt to that creature this way, instead that much damage is dealt to that creature's controller and you convert Megatron. From looking at these two, we can see clearly that we're going to make a deck that focuses on attacking our opponents, sacrificing artifacts, dealing damage to our opponent's creatures and their faces, and then casting more artifacts off the mono we get. It's that simple. So firstly, is we're attacking. We're all on the same page here, but we have a handful of cards to equip to our commander to help with that. Lightning Greaves is two mana for an artifact equipment. Equipped creature has haste and stroud for equip costs zero. Giving our commander haste is great, since we want to be swinging in as fast as possible. Speaking of swinging in fast, Swiftfoot Boots is two mana, artifact equipment, equipped creature has hexproof and haste. Equip cost one. Same thing as before, but we prefer hexproof. Scythe Claw is a five mana artifact equipment, living weapon. When this equipment enters the battlefield, create a zero zero black germ creature token, then attach this to it. Equipped creature gets plus one plus one. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, that player loses half their life rounded up. Equip costs three. This deals an insane amount of damage and makes us a ton of mana in the process. It can also be sacked in a worst case scenario to deal with a problem creature our opponents have. Whisper Silk Cloak is a three mana artifact equipment. Equipped creature can't be blocked and has shroud. Equip costs two. This lets us attack without worry and make sure we get damage in. Next, we have artifacts that we want to sacrifice to our commander's ability. For this, we're looking at large artifacts to deal the most amount of damage we can. It's also great if they have a useful ETB ability or can cost less mana to cast. Ancient Stone Idol is a 10 mana artifact creature golem, 12-12 with flash. This spell costs one less to cast for each attacking creature. Trample. When Ancient Stone Idol dies, create a 6-12 colorless construct artifact creature token with trample. This card is great because we can cast it for less than 10, but it still deals 10 damage if we sack into Megatron. Plus, when it kicks the bucket, we get a really solid blocker as well. Bosch Iron Golem is an 8 mana legendary artifact creature Golem 6-7 with Trample. And, 3 in a red, sacrifice an artifact, Bosch Iron Golem deals damage equal to the sacrificed artifact's mana value to any target. Bosch is kind of like the second copy of our commander, and the OG when it comes to sacrificing artifacts to deal damage. Great inclusion that can also be sacrificed as need be to deal some major damage. Metalware Colossus is an 11 mana artifact creature construct 10-10. Metalware Colossus costs X less to cast, where X is the total converted mana cost of non-creature artifacts you control. Sacrifice two artifacts, return Metalware Colossus from your graveyard to your hand. This card is here solely for sacking purposes. Plus, we can get it back from the grave, which is extra sweet. Meteor Golem is a 7 mana artifact creature golem 3-3. When Meteor Golem enters the battlefield, destroy target non-land permanent opponent controls. Destroy a permanent when it enters the battlefield, and we can sack it to deal 7 damage. Yes, please. Mycosynth Golem is an 11 mana 4-5 artifact creature golem, affinity for artifacts. This spell costs 1 less to cast for each artifact you control. Artifact creatures you play have affinity for artifacts. They cost 1 less to play for each artifact you control. We love making all the artifacts cost less, and this is especially great in this deck. Since we run over 10 mono ramp artifacts, we can ramp into threats that we're already making cheaper. Mur Enforcer is a 7 mono artifact creature. Mur 4 4 affinity for artifacts. This is another card that's here solely to be sacrificed to Megatron. It's great since it'll usually cost less to cast. Mur Battlesphere is a 7 mono 4 7 artifact creature. Mur Construct. When Mur Battlesphere enters the battlefield, create 4 1 1 colorless Mur artifact creature tokens. When Mur Battlesphere attacks, you may tap X untapped Mur you control. If you do, Mer Battle Sphere gets plus X plus O until end of turn and deals X damage to target player or planeswalker it's attacking. This card is here to deal extra damage when we swing in. We can swing in, tap all our Mer to deal 4 damage, then sacrifice the Battle Sphere itself to deal 7 damage to something. This can translate into getting rid of a decent sized threat and still being able to ramp into a big artifact for the turn.
Sojourner's Companion is a 7 mana 4 4 artifact creature salamander, affinity for artifacts and artifact land cycling. Pay 2, discard this card, search your library for an artifact land card, reveal it and put it into your hand, then shuffle. This card is just like Mer Enforcer, but also has the benefit of being able to grab artifact lands for fixing purposes if we need it early. Platinum Angel is a 7 mana artifact creature angel 4 4 with flying. You can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game. This card says we can't lose the game. And in a do or die scenario, can be sacked to get rid of something problematic. But generally speaking, don't do that. It's usually worse than not being able to lose the game. Scuttling Doom Engine is a 6 mana artifact creature construct 6 6. Scuttling Doom Engine cannot be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. When Scuttling Doom Engine dies, it deals 6 damage to target opponent or planeswalker. I have wanted to put Scuttling Doom Engine in a deck for so long now, and it's finally a good fit. Sacrificing it to deal 6 to a creature, then deal 6 to the face guaranteed. If Scuttling Doom Engine wasn't made for this deck, then I don't know what was. Platinum Imperion is an 8 mana artifact creature golem, 8-8, eight, eight, your life total can't change. Similar to Platinum Angel, generally speaking, you shouldn't sacrifice this. It can keep you in the game far longer than you have any right to be with how aggressive this deck is. Worm Coil Engine is a 6 mana artifact creature worm, 6-6, six, six, death touch, lifelink. When Worm Coil Engine dies, create a 3-3 three, three colorless worm artifact creature token with death touch and a 3-3 three, three colorless worm artifact creature token with lifelink. This is a great attacker, blocker, and sacrificing target all wrapped up into one card. Chromatic Orrery is a 7 mana legendary artifact. You may spend mana as though it were mana of any color. Tap, add 5 colorless, pay 5 miscellaneous, tap, draw a card for each color amongst permanents you control. This can give us a bit of card draw, which is pretty nice in these colors. It can also fix our mana and be sacrificed to Megatron when we don't need fixing anymore. Spine of Ishsha is a 7 mana artifact. When Spine of Ishsha enters the battlefield, destroy target permanent. When Spine of Ishsha is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, return Spine of Ishsha to its owner's hand. This is great because it comes a 2 for 1 when we sack it to our commander. Summoning Station is a 7 mana artifact. Tap, put a 2 2 colorless pincer creature into play. Whenever an artifact is put into the graveyard from play, you may untap Summoning Station. This synergizes with the deck really well since we already want to be putting artifacts into the grave. Who doesn't love free 2-2s? Next, we run a handful of effects that trigger off of us sacrificing our stuff to our commander. Disciple of the Vault is one black for a creature human cleric 1-1. One, one. Whenever an artifact is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you may have target opponent lose one life. This will trigger all the time, and as a one-drop, what's not to love? Blood Artist is one in a black for a creature vampire, zero one. Whenever Blood Artist or another creature dies, target player loses one life and you gain one life. Blood Artist lets us gain some life and drain the opponent, netting us more mana. Mayhem Devil is one in a black and a red for a creature type devil, three three. Whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, Mayhem Devil deals one damage to any target. This is great because it triggers no matter what we sacrifice, and we can point it at a creature to deal that last bit of damage we need, or at someone's face so that we can have extra mana. Next we have a pseudo reanimation package where we bring back our artifacts. Junk Diver is a 3 mana artifact creature, bird, 1-1, one, one, flying. When Junk Diver dies, return another target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. And, Mer Retriever, 2 mana artifact creature, Mer, 1-1, one, one, when Mer Retriever dies, return another artifact for card from your graveyard to your hand. And, Workshop Assistant, 3 mana artifact creature construct, 1-2, when Workshop Assistant dies, return another target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. All serve the same purpose of getting us artifacts back from the grave. Even if we have to recast them, it's better than nothing. But that brings us to the real reanimation stuff, like Felden of the Third Path. One a red and a red for a legendary creature human artificer, two, three, with two and a red, tap, create a token that's a copy of target creature in your graveyard, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. It gains haste, sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. I want to copy Scuttling Doom Engine all day, long with this commander and sacrifice it for a metric ton of damage. Trash for Treasure is two and a red for a sorcery as an additional cost to cast the spell Sacrifice an Artifact, return target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield. This is great for late game turning your mono rocks into a threat or getting back any key piece of our strategy. Goblin Welders, one red, creature type Goblin Artificer, one one, tap. Basically, the short and long of it is take a card from your graveyard that's an artifact and a card that's on your battlefield that's an artifact and switch them. This is an amazing effect that lets us put an artifact back every single turn. What's not to love about this little guy? Onrakir, the Traveler, is 4 in a black, legendary artifact creature Necron, 4-4. Four, four. Lord of the Firerian Legions. Whenever Onrakir, the Traveler, attacks, you may cast an artifact spell from your hand or graveyard by paying life equal to its mana value rather than paying its mana cost. I completely understand if you want to keep your properties separate and don't want to run 40k cards in your Transformer deck, but this guy is always an option and a really good one at that. Finally, 
we are on a couple of weird one-off effects. Blitzwing, Cruel Tormentor for five and a black is a legendary artifact creature robot, 6-5, more than meets the eye, three and a black. At the beginning of your end step, target opponent loses life equal to the life that player lost this turn. If no life is lost this way, convert Blitzwing. Don't forget, at the end of the day, we're looking to ultimately take our opponents out, and doubling the amount of damage we've dealt to an opponent in a turn is a great way of accomplishing that goal. Low Shield, Clockwork Scholar, is 2 and a white for a legendary creature Elephant Artificer, 2-4, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to attacking artifact creatures you control. Whenever one or more artifact creatures enter the battlefield under your control, draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn. Card draw, and our commander doesn't receive combat damage. Yes, please. Torbrand, Thane of Redfell, is one red, red, and a red for a legendary creature Dwarf Noble for a 2-4. If red source you control would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent op an opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus two instead. This will augment Megatron's damage when we sacrifice artifacts, and with the extra two damage we get off of Torbrand, even our Monorocks start looking scary to our opponents. Vile Smasher the Fierce is one of black and red for a legendary creature Goblin Berserker 2-3. Whenever you cast your first spell each turn, choose an opponent at random. Vile Smasher the Fierce deals damage equal to that spell's converted mana cost to that player or a planeswalker that player controls. This card can deal some real damage, but unfortunately doesn't combo well with our commander. Either we cast something main phase 1 to get extra mana post-combat main phase, or we cast something big main phase 2 and deal a ton of damage. It's weird non-bow that still works great in the deck, just not the way we want it to. Fireball, X and a red, sorcery, this spell costs one more to cast for each target beyond the first. Fireball deals X damage divided evenly, rounded down amongst any number of targets. Cut this if you want, but Fireball is a cool card, and knowing you'll get all but one of the mana spent on it back usually in your main phase 2 is pretty sweet. Darksteel Forge is a 9 mana artifact. Artifacts you control have indestructible. Artifacts have indestructible. Sounds good to me. Boros Charm is a red and white for an instant. Choose one. Boros Charm deals 4 damage to target player or planeswalker. Permanence you control gain indestructible until end of turn. Target creature gains double strike until end of turn. This is so cool because all three modes are relevant here. We can turn 2 mana into 4 mana, protect ourselves from a board wipe, or give our commander double strike at instant speed to get extra mana. And that's it. That's the deck. Can you think of any cards I missed? If so, leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like, and if you really like what I do, you can always support me on Patreon or just subscribe here. Thank you so much for watching, and have a wonderful day.